what if you've made all a bunch of diet changes? So maybe you've read a little bit about Ayurveda and you're like, okay, I made these diet changes or I've tried them before and that still you feel like there is something outside of you that is causing your imbalances, like your job. I'm Heather Grish and this is the Wisdom of the Body podcast. This podcast explores the idea of body intelligence as the real key to learning the knowledge of life or what we call Ayurveda in the ancient language of Sanskrit. We do that by connecting with today's creative leaders and experts who will help you listen to your body, trust your gut, and live in deeper harmony with nature. Come join me as we unlock the golden door to clear direct perception and become very deep listeners. You can find the Wisdom of the Body podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can also follow us by joining my email at heathergrish.com or on Instagram at heathergrish. I know you're going to love this podcast, so take a second right now to subscribe. Hey, the topics in this podcast episode are in no way intended to be medical advice. Should you have any questions about anything discussed in this podcast, podcast episode, please reach out to your medical doctor or other healthcare professional. Hello, and welcome to the Wisdom of the Body. I'm Heather Grish, and today's episode is all about a topic that many of us face, what to do when your job is imbalancing your doshas. And I know all about this because when I was in Ayurveda school, I was working in a very demanding job and going to grad school at the same time. It was a lot. Now, even though I was going to grad school on an ashram in the mountains, it was still a lot to work full-time, study, and all that. And I was getting up every morning at 5 a.m. to meditate, and I was doing this very intense yoga every morning, and I had constant heartburn, constant heartburn. It was really intense, and I was at the center of a huge project at work. I was always being met with negativity everywhere I went. It was really hard, so it was really challenging for me emotionally. And then on top of all of this, you know, I'm trying to change my life. On top of all of this, I just felt like I was working so hard. And then I was just so deeply unfulfilled. And I felt like I lost myself and I was burning from the inside. And a lot of people spend a significant portion of their lives at work, whether that's in an office or at home now. And sometimes our job environments can inadvertently aggravate our doshas. And that can lead to stress and imbalance. So maybe you have a high pressure role that triggers a pitta imbalance or a sedentary job that exacerbates a kapha imbalance. You really need to address these issues to maintain your overall well-being. But don't worry today, we're going to explore some practical tips that you can take to restore balance and find harmony. So even if your job is a bit of a dosha disruptor, it's hard for any job not to be a dosha disruptor. As I've learned, you know, working in a lot of different environments. But before we explore some strategies to help you manage your dosha imbalances that might be caused by your job, let's first define what a dosha is, because some of you might be wondering that. So first, why is it that sometimes you feel like something's off physically and that it might be connected to something mental, emotional, or energetic? But if you were to go to your doctor to talk about it, you can't seem to get any clarity or validation from your doctor or any other conventional medical professional on the fact that something that you feel inside might be connected, whether you know the, something physical might be connected to something emotional or something in your life might be connected to something that you're feeling inside. And why do we seem to get some of the same types of imbalances that recur throughout our life? Sometimes they can get really uncomfortable and other times they might kind of be kept at bay and we might not notice them as much, but we might notice, oh, I always get this thing like this every once in a while. So here's a hint on both of those situations. The answer is doshas. One of the key concepts you got to understand from Ayurveda is what's referred to as dosha theory. Doshas are the three fundamental energies that govern our physical, mental, and emotional processes They're referred to as vata, pitta, and kapha. I'll go into a little bit of what these are. Each one represents different aspects of our being, and they'll influence our health in different ways. The word dosha actually means that which can go out of balance. So a dosha is a humoral response in your body that changes according to the environment or your diet 
or the life stage that you're in or the climate, weather, and also, yes, your behaviors will also affect your doshas. Now, your job is to have these doshas. You want doshas, you need them, but you need to have them in the right amounts. If they get too high or too low, you're going to have an imbalance that occurs. So we normally talk about when doshas get imbalanced, what happens when they get too high. So that's mainly what I'll be covering today. So there are three doshas and you have all of them, but you'll have them in different amounts at any given time. And vata is the energy of movement and change. It's associated with air and space elements. So when vata is imbalanced, you're going to be very creative, lively, enthusiastic, If it gets out of whack, you might actually feel unfocused. You might feel anxious or ungrounded. Your energy will feel quite scattered. So that's vata, air and space. And then we have pitta, which is the energy of transformation. So it's linked to fire and water. And a balanced pitta person will have clarity and focus and motivation, but an imbalanced pitta will lead to irritability, overheating, and a tendency to become critical, intense, sharp. Yeah. So pitta is fire and water. So think of it as like lava. You know how you can cook ceviche in citric acid? Well, pitta is a little bit like citric acid. It actually means that which cooks. You need that kind of energy to transform things. But if you get too much of it and you don't have the right kind of protection, then you'll get burned in the process. So the third dosha is kapha. Kapha is the energy of stability and structure. It's connected with earth and water elements. When kapha is balanced, you're going to feel calm and loving and steady. But when it's out of balance, you might experience lethargy, weight gain, or a lack of motivation. You might start getting weird, growthy type things. Now you might be wondering, how do these imbalances affect me? When your doshas are out of balance, it's basically like trying to drive a car with a flat tire it's not going to go smoothly. You might experience physical symptoms, like you might have digestive issues, or your body might feel fatigued or heavy, but you also might have mental and emotional challenges like mood swings or brain fog, depending on the specific type of dosha imbalance that you have. So for example, if your vats is too high, you're going to find it hard to focus, or you might feel like your thoughts are racing a mile a minute. And if your pits is out of balance, you could feel irritable or stressed. And if cough is off, you might feel sluggish or unmotivated. And your body affects your mind and your mind affects your body. So here's how you recognize the signs of these imbalance. Let's go a little bit deeper into this. So with vata, you might experience symptoms like dry skin or anxiety, insomnia, or irregular digestion. So it's this energy of erosion because it's air and space. There's not a lot of like juicy, warm things in there. It's really just like you're drying out and you're becoming frazzled with a vata imbalance. With a pitta imbalance, you look out for signs of irritability, heartburn, things that burn, excessive heat, inflammation, things that are red, especially like on the skin, burning sensations, looser stools, things like that. And then with a kapha imbalance, remember this is the water and earth that's a little bit slower, right? Because water and earth together makes mud. It's hard to trudge through. So your symptoms might include sluggishness or weight gain, water retention, excess mucus or weird growths. And one of the things I always experience when I have a kapha imbalance is I wake up and my head feels like it's 10 times bigger than it is because all of the lymph is kind of pooled in my head. And so that's an example of you having a kapha imbalance in your head. And one of the great things to do about that is to exercise, to like move it through. So, you know, you want to do some things about this when you notice that you have these doshas that are out of balance. We do a lot in Ayurveda. We do a lot with modifying the diet and the lifestyle to significantly impact your doshas. With the diet, we'll change it seasonally because the doshas increase in different seasons. So for example, in summer, you can assume that your fire element's gonna go up more. And in the winter, you can assume that your vata and probably your kapha are also gonna go up more because that's a cold season. In fall, when the leaves start falling off the trees, you know, you're gonna have certain doshas that go out of balance then. And that's why where you live, you might notice people tend to have different things on the menu at different times of year. There might be certain foods that you eat at certain holidays that, you know, warming spices in winter, for example. So there's some of the cultures have really carried through some of this natural intelligence that many of us seem to have lost in the modern world. 
So when you're trying to make diet changes, these are just a few of them. So vata, you might incorporate warm, moist or grounding foods like a soup or a stew or cooked grains. And you don't want to have salads if you're the vata person. You don't want to have raw veggies. You don't want to have cold things or dry foods like crackers or popcorn that can dry you out more and aggravate that vata. If you have a pitta imbalance, you want to focus on things that are cooling and soothing, and especially in summer. So having fresh cooling fruits, sweet fruits, leafy greens that are bitter in nature, because the bitter helps you release the heat from the body, and dairy, actually. So creamy, cool things can help calm pitta. And you don't want to have things that are spicy. You don't want to have things that are super oily or acidic or sour because those can increase the fire element in your body. And then if you have a cough imbalance, you can choose light or stimulating, maybe even slightly spicy foods, and those will help energize that cough and move it. So you want to include plenty of vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and you don't want to have things that are heavy or oily or sweet, you know, just avoid desserts. (laughs) when there's a lot of kapha going on, because it'll make you mucusy. It'll make you feel heavy and mucusy, and it'll start having things grow where you don't want them to grow in your body. So yeah, but what if you've made all a bunch of diet changes? So maybe you've read a little bit about Ayurveda and you're like, okay, I made these diet changes or I've tried them before. And yet still you feel like there is something outside of you that is causing your imbalances, like your job. I know I was there once. I was like, I'm doing everything perfectly. Why the heck do I still not feel great? So you have to also understand that your job can affect your doshas. And you want to go to the source of the imbalance so you can go after the root cause. So if you think your job might be contributing to poor health, something about it likely is. It may or may not be exactly what you think it is, but something about your job, it could be your schedule. It could be one of your colleagues. It could just be something about it likely is embarrassing you. So it's important before we get into solutions on this to understand how different job situations can affect each of the doshas. So with vata, because vatas are governed by air and space, that makes them prone to anxiety and restlessness and fatigue when they face things that are unpredictable. Like if you have an unpredictable schedule with a, or if you have a lot of movement, you know, like a yoga teacher that has to go to five different yoga studios, you know, in a day to teach a yoga class, things that make you mobile or unpredictable or a job with irregular hours, any kind of constant change, while it can feel enlivening at first, after a while, it will aggravate vata. So if someone already has a lot of vata, it's just going to make it worse to have that unpredictability and really super ungrounding. Now, a person with high pitta is because they're more fire and water, they may have a tendency towards irritability and frustration when faced with high pressure, competitive or overly hot conditions. They may be really good at that. They may be kind of have a tendency to go into those kinds of situations, but they'll find that if they don't rest and they get too much of that competitive energy and too much of that high pressure. Or if you work in a kitchen, for example, if your job demands constant deadlines or again, involves anything heated, it could raise your pizza too much. So if you already have a lot of pizza going on for other reasons, maybe it's in your constitution or maybe you're eating a lot of pizza, high pizza foods in your diet, or you have a lot of high pizza people around you, whatever. If you go to work, and your job has a lot of that pizza energy, it's going to raise your pizza. Now with kapha, which is again, earth and water, this is when, you know, it's going to go out of balance when you sit on your butt all day. (laughs) Anything that's sedentary or monotonous, just like calculating a spreadsheet all day sitting on your butt, you know, something that moves slowly, it doesn't require a lot of variety, and it's very stable, that is a kind of kapha job setting, especially if you don't have to leave your house. (laughs) That's probably why a lot of people gained weight in the pandemic. Jobs that lack stimulation, or if you've been in it for a long time and you're just like, okay, I got uh, this thing covered. You're probably seeking a lot of excitement outside of work. And 
that anything that requires long periods of inactivity can aggravate kapha and that can lead to actually physical manifestations in your body. And that's why this stuff matters for you to pay attention to. So if you want to adjust your work environment to help mitigate the dosha imbalances, these are some things that you could do. Just some examples. So with vata, you could make your workspace very grounding and soothing. So just throwing out some ideas. Cozy chair in the room where you work. You know, have an office, have a home base where you work. Don't move around all the place. Don't go work in the coffee shops as much. You know, actually have an office at home, a cozy chair, a plant, grounding colors. Keep your desk very organized so you don't have this mental clutter. And then have items that bring comfort and grounding. So warm earth tone colors, chunky soft furniture, have a clutter-free area and then have it be cozy, cozy for you and restful for Vata because you're already going to have a lot of energy. You just want to keep it grounded and stable. With Pitta, there should be a focus on cooling and calming your work environment. So you have to have good ventilation, cooling colors like blue and green, and avoid direct sunlight or excessive heat. You can incorporate soothing elements like a small water fountain or have relaxing artwork. And for kapha, you want to make your workspace dynamic and stimulating. If you have to work from home, get that treadmill desk. Again, you're going to need to move around and energize yourself. So use bright colors Keep your area spacious, have elements that invigorate you, minimalist design with motivational elements. So make it invigorating and stimulating, use bright colors and anything that motivates you to move around, anything that engages you. So here's an example. Like if you're a kapha type right now, you have high kapha and you're feeling stuck, you know, perk things up perk and energize things up. If you're having high vata right now, you want to ground and calm and warm and keep things moist in the environment around you. Just some examples. Now, you can also incorporate different types of dosha balancing activities. For vata, you can take yoga stretches, seated grounding yoga poses, but seriously focus on this consistent work schedule to stay grounded. And for Pitta, you're the one that wants to take breaks. You need to take breaks, short moments of rest and leisure to cool down. Definitely outside, get outside in nature when there's a lot of Pitta going on. And with Kapha, exercise in the morning before you work. Very important to get energized standing and stretching during work, go for short walks, vary your tasks. And you have to remember that the lethargy that you get from kapha is actually very different than the burnout of pitta and the depletion of vata. So while when we talk about lethargy and people being tired, lethargy from kapha is a heaviness. And, you know, people also feel lethargy when they're burned out from pitta, but that's for a different reason. And when they're depleted because of vata, they can also feel lethargy. So you'll have to learn to spot the difference between these types of lethargy and tiredness so that you can have your best energy. And you definitely want to manage stress, duh, like the right amount of stress. You've probably heard of eustress, which is good stress and distress, which is the negative stress, and everybody needs a certain level of it. You have to figure out what is the right level of stress for you and balance that accordingly. Now, if you've done all this work, you've gotten the right level of stress, you've changed your diet, you've changed your office, you know, sometimes you might need more support. If your job continues to aggravate your doshas despite your best efforts, you can consider talking to your employer, maybe you have adjustments to your work environment or your schedule that would better support what you need to be healthy. Or maybe you need to get a new job. And, you know, I know that's not a great thing to hear, especially if you like your job, maybe you need to do your job somewhere else or in a different way in a different environment. 
If you're working from home, maybe you need to go into the office. If you're going into the office and you're getting stressed out driving in traffic, maybe you do need a job where you work from home or at least that's easier for you to get to. Or maybe you make some weird creative compromise like where I live, there's a ferry and a lot of people will take the ferry to work and they find that that peaceful ride of going on the ferry to and from work It allows them to have this time on the water and then they can prepare for work while they're on the ferry. They're not driving, so you get extra time to prepare and then wind down on the way home so you really leave your job at the office. And of course, if you're into Ayurveda, an Ayurvedic practitioner can provide personalized advice and help you with strategies tailored to your specific situation and help with coaching on that and herbs and all that to support the transition. So if you're a Vata type experiencing this chaos from irregular hours, maybe you need to discuss flexible work arrangements with your employer. Maybe that'll help you manage your dosha more effectively. Because addressing dosha imbalances caused by your job, it first involves recognizing the impact of your work environment And then you can implement practical strategies to balance your doshas, but you got to seek support when you need it. And I know not everybody can just check out of the system and run off to a yoga retreat every day. You know, life is easy when you're, well, not really, life's not easy when you live as a monk in the woods. There are different challenges, but you don't have certain types of stress when you get to check out of the busyness of life, right? But by taking these steps, you can create more harmonious work-life balance and better align with your true nature, which is just dying to come out of you and just calling for you to listen to it. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Wisdom of the Body. I hope these tips help you navigate any dosha imbalances caused by your job and find greater balance in your work and life. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and share it with friends who might find it helpful too. And share it with your colleagues. <laughs> Feel free to reach out with any questions or topics you'd like to explore in future episodes. Until next time, take care of yourself and let Ayurveda guide you to a balanced and fulfilling life. If you are embarking on a fertility journey and are ready to have your mind blown about what your body is really capable of and how it's impacted by the environment, then check out my book, The Ayurvedic Guide to Fertility. You can actually download the introduction to the book for free on my website at heathergrish.com. That's heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H dot com. Read the intro for free and then buy the rest of this fertility enlightening book pretty much anywhere books are sold. You want a full human experience when you seek a healthcare provider and you don't want 15 minutes with someone who can't even try to find out the root cause of things because they're so overwhelmed themselves. You have a body, a mind, a heart, and dare I say it, even emotions. You're not crazy. Everything does affect you, and it's possible to feel better if you have the support you need. Set up an appointment with me to heal naturally. Go to heathergrish.com. That's heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H.com. Thank you for tuning in and dropping in with us today. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I really want to hear your feedback. To learn more about my work, visit heathergrish.com. That's Heather, G-R-Z-Y-C-H dot com. And meet me here next time on The Wisdom of the Body. <laughs>